Hi, I recently picked up a big job lot of various bits of equipment and um, amongst it was this. This is an old AVO 8. I thought I'd just do a quick look at this uh, before, it, I'm sure this will go on eBay fairly soon because I've got no particular use for it, but um, it's quite a nice piece of kit. In its day, which was basically from the 1950s through to the um, 1970s, this was very much the, sort of the, the equivalent of the Fluke 87s. This was basically the ultimate multimeter. Um, you'd see it on any sort of radio repairman's bench and they were sort of certainly guarded very fiercely by their owners. They were yeah, pretty much the top of the range uh, general purpose multimeter of its day. It's got these lovely um, clicky switches. I mean, these switches make a, a gosson feel like a cheap piece of Chinese plastic. I mean, they're just absolutely gorgeous. Obviously, it's not auto ranging that you expect the, the, these days, but it's got um, fairly fine um, divisions. Not certainly in the voltage range, it goes up in sort of 3, 10, 30, 100, so you get fairly reasonable resolution there. It does sort of AC DC volts as well as ohms. It's got a fairly wide range from milliamps, goes from 10, uh, sorry, uh, 50 microamps full scale, uh, right up to 10 amps uh, in steps of 0.1. Um, it also does high voltage, there's a couple of high voltage ranges, these go up to 3 kV AC and DC. And this is a Mark V, um, which is sort of fairly recent, this is from about the mid 70s. I think it went up to about Mark 8 or 9 uh, over the years. And in fact, they were only actually discontinued in 2008, and even that was only because they couldn't get the mechanical parts. There was actually still demand for them and I certainly remember seeing these in the RS catalogue. Um, I think they're about sort of five or six hundred quid at the time so you know even when digital meters were around people were still buying these things and there was still some demand for them. Uh, I've done some I just did a few checks and this this is actually still pretty accurate it's pretty close to you know cal it's calibrated pretty close to as far as you as accurate as you can read on the scale. The meter scale's got this mirror on it the idea is that obviously with the, with a meter, because of the dis, dif, di, distance between the pointer and the scale, if you read it at an angle, it can be potentially wrong. So the idea is with the mirror, you line it up until the reflection of the pointer lines up with the pointer itself, and that that's your your reference point for your uh, reading. Um, being a mechanical meter. Um, it is potentially uh, quite fragile. So, for example, you know, if it's moved around, you see the pointer does actually move, but the, the, uh, it's got this off position. If you put it in the off position, it shorts the meter terminal, so it, actually, it really damps the, um, the pointer so it doesn't move nearly so much. Apart from range features, there's a few simple controls. These are the zero controls for the three resistance ranges. These compensate for differences in the uh, battery voltage, so when you want to use a resistance range, you short the probes and set these up to zero, which, of course, um, is on the right-hand side of the scale because this is effectively a current meter. The resistance scale is logarithmic because, um, of course, R, R equals V over I, so the resistance is proportional to 1 over the current. So you can see, um, I've, just connect, I've just connected this um, resistance box, box up to it, you stick it on the ohms range, you adjust that to get to get your zero, so that, that compensates for the, whatever your battery voltage is. And then, um, as you look, so that's 1k, 2k, 3k, so it's, it's pretty much bang on. Uh, obviously, it's not pretty good if you you know if you're wanting to read up in the 80s or 90s of K um, or 80s or 90s it, yeah because it's it's so tight together it's not not super uh, accurate there but it's pretty much as accurate as a an analog meter can be um, the other the only other two controls there's a cutout which that's just an overload cutout so instead of a few it does have a fuse on the own range for additional protection but um, this cutout is for things like the overload on the current protection and also reverse meter connection that just um, reverses the meter it doesn't make sense on the um, own range but on the voltage range it means you don't have to flip the lead around or see with a standard meter it just shows the negative signal but that's clearly not an option on the analog meter like this Right, for the, the bottom two ohms ranges, it uses this D cell as the power supply, which D cell might seem a little bit of overkill. It does um, put about 75 milliamps through the load, so obviously that's going to give you um, fairly decent battery life. One problem with these meters these days is the higher resistance range uses a 15 volt battery. Um, that's the original one, this one is sort of fairly dead. Um, I also found that this came with this, is, it looks like a holder they made to, to use a different type of battery. These are originally used for things like grid bias on uh, valve radios, and of course, these went sort of completely obsolete so sort of the various people have you, you know, done various things like putting sort of stacks of coin cells and say this sort of thing but I actually um, found that quite a neat little hack that worked quite nicely is just five standard 2032 um, lithium cells and uh, that's an M M8 nylock nut actually makes a, yeah, a very nice fit to give you a 15 volt supply you just need to put a little bit of foam or something to hold, hold that in but um, that actually works quite nicely using bog standard off-the-shelf batteries. 
The internal construction this is actually quite interesting for such a obviously the, yeah the design of this has been revised over the years, um, but we've got this flexible PCBs doing all the interconnect, which was a bit of a surprise. Um, the main uh, part of the switch is on this uh, PCB, but there's also a second layer of switches down here connecting to the flexible um, PCB. But the, you know, these are mechanically look very, very solid. In fact, there's, there's also there's wipers on both sides of the PCB, as well as that one on the flex. So there's basically three sets of um, wafers on each switch. The other interesting thing is these. I mean, these are pretty much sort of the equivalent of the old of the um, the fluke hybrids. They actually seem to be basically PCB, but with tracks in various sort of meandering patterns, um, which I can't actually see any sort of cut marks. But this one, the one on here, yeah, it looks like it's actually designed to be trimmable by cutting. See, so there's all these. Um, points here and I think they've actually sort of cut a few little pieces out and there seems to be a combination of various series and parallel paths so they can sort of probably trim it down by different sorry trim resistance up by various degrees so they can sort of do it you've got basically coarse and fine adjustments depending on uh, which part you trim it so and that, that's quite an interesting um, interesting method and so it's not entirely dissimilar to the fluke sort of uh, hybrid resistor networks with their multiple taps I'm pretty sure the flip ones are laser trimmed as well. This this is probably more likely to be sort of mechanic yeah, mechanically uh, measured and trimmed. Uh, okay, there's this is a um, a current transformer. The AC current ranges um, use it use this for the current measurement. I think the voltage ranges may also do because uh, one issue is the DC to, sorry the AC to DC conversion is done just using a couple of as uh, a couple of germanium diodes there. And I'm guessing that um, they probably use this transformer to maybe boost the voltage up um, so that the effect of the voltage drop on the diodes is reduced, particularly at the uh, lower end. I've not actually checked the accuracy at the lower end. And here you've got the big high voltage resistors for the uh, the 3000 volt range, so these will be big sort of high voltage divider resistors. There's a few other uh, other ones here, so this will just form a voltage divider with um, the required high voltage isolation. You also can see this the meter movement seal is, is inside this plastic cover to keep all the dust out because this is a very high precision mechanical movement and you really don't want any um, any dust to get in there. But um, so quite a su surprising bit of construction for a sort of what's essentially a fairly old instrument. Um, so I think this one's about mid 70s, so they were maybe sort of trying to use some more up to date um, assembly techniques. But certainly this, this flex was a definite surprise. But um, yeah, interesting little piece of old kit, but uh, just too big and too clunky to use nowadays.